Hello everyone, Foxy here, and welcome to Mostly Mental. Today, I'm starting a series on one of my favorite subjects, combinatorics, the art of fancy counting. To start with, we'll need to define some terms. First, n factorial, which we write like this with an exclamation point, is the number of ways to arrange n things in order, that is, the number of permutations. So, for example, if we have three things here, we can arrange them blue, green, red, or blue, red, green, or red, green, blue, or red, blue, green, or green, red, blue, or green, blue, red. And that gives us 3 factorial is 6, because there are 6 ways to arrange them. The next useful concept is n choose k, which we write like this with two numbers in brackets, and that is the number of ways to choose k of n things. So, for example, if we want to choose two of these three ducks, we can take green and blue, or green and red, or blue and red. And that gives us 3 choose 2 is 3. So how can we count these things here, the factorials and the n choose k, without needing to list out all of the arrangements? Let's say we want to arrange the numbers 1 through n. How many ways can we do that? Well, let's consider the positions the numbers are going to end up in. There are n of them since we're arranging n things. What options do we have for the first position? Well, there are n of them since we have no restrictions on it. How about the second position? Well, regardless of what we chose for the first position, there's one number we can't use, but all of the rest are fair game, so that gives us n minus 1 possibilities. How about the third position? Well, again, there are two numbers we can't use, but everything else is still valid, so that gives us n minus 2, and so on and so forth, all the way down to 1, the option for the last number. And as we said a moment ago, the number of permutations is n factorial, so this gives us our formula. n factorial is the product of the numbers 1 up through n. Okay, now let's say we want to add some color. Let's color the numbers 1 through k in red and all the rest in blue. How many ways are there to arrange them now? Well, Clearly, it's still n factorial, since we're just arranging n things, but let's look at that another way. First, let's choose which of the positions are going to end up with red numbers in them. So, by default, that means all the rest of the positions are going to end up being blue. How many ways can we choose those positions? Well, n choose k, because there are k positions and we're choosing n of them. Okay, then once we've chosen those positions, we'll need to arrange the red numbers within them. And there are k red numbers, and any order of them is valid, so that gives us k factorial. And then once we've done that, we need to arrange the blue numbers too. And there are n minus k of them, so that gives us n minus k factorial. And as we said a moment ago, the total 
is n factorial. So dividing through, we get n choose k is n factorial over k factorial n minus k factorial. And that really gets at the heart of combinatorics. We've taken a problem, solved it in two different ways, and set the answers equal to each other to learn something new. Let's try an example. Let's show that n choose k is equal to n over k times n minus 1 choose k minus 1. And it's pretty quick to check that with the formula we just derived, but that doesn't really give us much insight, so we're going to ignore that. Instead, let's try it by counting something in two different ways. Let's say we have a group of n people, and we want a committee of size k, and we want to have one leader. How many ways can we do that? Well, one way we could count that is to choose the committee first. And since we're choosing k people out of n, that's n choose k, and then we're choosing one of those k people to be the leader, so that's multiplying by k. Equivalently, we could first choose the leader, and there are n ways to do that. And then, once we've chosen the leader, there are n minus 1 people remaining, and k minus 1 of them are going to end up in our committee, so that's n minus 1 choose k minus 1. And so, depending on the order we choose, whether we choose the committee first and then the leader, or the leader and then the committee, we get two different expressions, but they're counting the same thing, so they must be equal. And then, dividing through by k, we get the formula we were looking for. Okay, let's turn our attention to another fun toy, Pascal's triangle. We start with a 1 at the top, and then two ones, and then one, two, one, and each time we add the numbers above to get the next one. So this would be a three, and the whole row would be one, three, three, one, then one, four, six, four, one, one, five, ten, ten, five, one, and so on. Can we compute these values without having to write out the whole triangle? To do that, we're going to need to interpret the numbers differently. Let's consider the paths that start at the top and go down, where each step is either down and to the left or down and to the right. So, for example, there are one, two paths down to here, or one, two, three, four paths down to here. Huh. So it looks like these numbers here are counting the number of paths. Does that pattern hold as we go further? Well, notice that each path to a number has to come from one of the two numbers above it, which means that the number of paths to here is going to be the number of paths to here plus the number of paths to here. And so if these are counting the number of paths, then this must also be counting the number. And in general, because the two numbers above are counting, so must the one below. And so that means that the numbers in Pascal's triangle count the number of paths down from the top. OK, but what does thinking about paths actually get us? Well, notice that every, every path is a collection of steps to the left and steps to the right. 
And so every path to say here, well, it's five steps down, and three of them must have been to the right. So any collection of five steps left and steps right, of which three are to the right, must be a path here. And how many of those are there? Well, we've got five steps, and we're choosing three of them to be to the right, so that means there must be five choose three. And more generally, there must be n choose k, where n is the row starting from zero, and k is the column, again, starting from zero. So we could equivalently write Pascal's triangle like this. 0 choose 0, 1 choose 0, 1 choose 1, 2 choose 0, 2 choose 1, 2 choose 2, 3 choose 0, 3 choose 1, 3 choose 2, 3 choose 3, and so on. Notice that this first diagonal here is all 1s. Well, that makes sense. There's always one path there with all the steps to the left and none to the right, which means that there's one way to choose none of the steps to be to the right. Or, in other words, n choose 0 is always 1. And if we plug that into our formula from before, we get n choose 0 is n factorial over 0 factorial n factorial. And so 1 equals, these cancel, 1 over 0 factorial, and multiplying, we get 0 factorial is 1. And more generally in combinatorics, we always say there's one way to arrange no items, or one way to do nothing, or one list of length 0. But going back to our triangle, why are we choosing the steps to the right? We could equally well choose the steps that are going to the left. The triangle is symmetric, after all. So we get n choose k is n choose n minus k. That is the steps to the right and the steps to the left. And sure enough, the algebra shows that too. If we replace k with n minus k in this formula, we get the same thing out. Hang on. If Pascal's triangle is made up of these n choose k, and we can add two numbers to get the one below it, that must mean that n choose k is n minus 1 choose k minus 1 plus n minus 1 choose k. And easy enough to verify algebraically, but it can also be interpreted as counting something. How many ways are there to choose k of the numbers from 1 to n? Well, by definition, that's n choose k. But we can also consider two cases. Either n is one of our chosen numbers, or it isn't. In either case, we've got n minus 1 left to choose from. And if we've chosen n, then we have k minus 1 left to choose. And if we haven't, we have k left to choose, which gives us this formula we're looking for. What happens if we take the sum of the numbers in any given row? Well, here we get 1, and here we get 1 plus 1 is 2. 4, 8, 16, 32. Hmm, it seems to be doubling every time. Why are we getting powers of 2 here? Well, what is this sum counting? We've got n choose 0 plus n choose 1 plus and so on up to plus n choose n which is the number of ways to choose 0 of n things, or 1 of n things, or 2 of n things, or so on and so forth. It's the number of ways to choose 
any number of things from a collection of size n. Well, okay, how else could we count that? Well, we could take the first thing, or we could not take it. That's two possibilities. And then we could take the second thing, or we could not take it. That's another two. And so on and so forth. And there are n of these, since there are n things we're choosing from. So that gives us two to the n. Okay. Now, instead of taking sums straight across, what happens if we take sums on a slight diagonal, like so? Well, here we get 1 and 1 and 2 and 3 and 5 and 8 and 13. Hang on, those look familiar. Those are the Fibonacci numbers. Where did they come from? That's interesting enough to be the subject of a whole second video, so that's exactly what I'm going to do. Join me next time as we explore the Fibonacci sequence. Thank you for watching. I hope to see you again soon.